picture this. After excitedly watching the opening cinematic, you finally reach the character creation in Baldur's Gate 3. Your attention is all too caught up in the aesthetic choices, making your character look like the fantastical embodiment of beauty. Or dragon. You get so caught up in this that when it's time for you to make an actual dialogue choice in the game, you sit there for half an hour thinking, contemplating, and ending up with just selecting the option that seems to move the plot more smoothly. Sorry for putting you on the spot, I will admit I'm guilty of this as well, but with a game like Baldur's Gate 3 where decisions have a lot of influence on the story, this can make your playthrough a less immersive experience. However, what if there was a way to completely or mostly avoid this issue? A method that could give you a clear idea of how your character would react in every situation. A method that would make your character much more interesting and compelling. I believe I know of such a method, and better yet, I'm going to break this method down into three pieces that when combined will give your character more character. Let's get into it. When you create your character, one of the first things you should come up with is a key character trait. Notice I said trait and not traits as in multiple. There's nothing wrong with coming up with multiple traits. The key thing here is to come up with a main character trait. What I mean by that is a trait that immediately tells you how this character behaves in most situations. As an example, this could be something like arrogant, a character that often acts selfishly or overestimates their own abilities. Or it could be something like overly generous, a character that acts generously towards anyone they meet, even if that person has bad intentions. This step alone will immediately make your playthrough much more interesting once your character starts interacting with the world. What we're trying to do here is to come up with a key character trait that can serve as the foundation of our character's personality. Knowing what kind of personality our character has makes it easier and much clearer how our character acts in different situations. To explain this process, let's create a character starting with a key character trait. Let's say that our character's key trait is that they are impulsive. So this person tends to act very quickly without thinking. So now we have our first bit of information about our character. Now let's move on to the next step. For step two, we are gonna focus a bit on our character's backstory. Now, before you get exhausted thinking I'm gonna ask you to write a full-on novel depicting everything that's happened in your character's life, this doesn't need to be incredibly fleshed out. What can make your character more interesting is if you come up with some sort of personal conflict that your character is facing. A personal conflict could be that your character is being unjustly accused of something that they didn't do. Maybe their conflict is that they are going through a breakup or the loss of someone close to them. You can even use your character's key trait to help inform the conflict. Let's take our character and come up with a personal conflict that says something about their backstory as well. What if our character being impulsive is the reason for their personal conflict? Let's say our character is a student of arcane magic, but they're currently being kicked out from the school because their impulsiveness got them into trouble. Now we have a conflict for our character that is directly tied to them, and we can use this as a basis for the next step. When you create your character for Baldur's Gate 3, you also want to think about how your character ended up being captured by the Mind Flayers. Did they get attacked? Did they attack the Mind Flayers? This is something you can think about. With our character, let's say that he went home from school that day. He had a big fight with his parents, which ended with him storming out of the house, and that's when he got captured. Now we know a bit about our character's past, what their current conflict is, and what led up to the beginning of the game. The final step remaining is creating our character's driving force, their want. A character's want is usually what drives the story forward. This is because for characters to move forward, they need something that they are trying to achieve. A very effective way of figuring out your character's want is to look at their current conflict. 
If a character's conflict is losing a loved one, perhaps their want is to try to keep them from dying or bring them back. Or perhaps if they're experiencing oppression, perhaps their want is to become so powerful that they never have to experience that again. Hopefully you can see the amount of power and drive that comes from giving your character a want. Instead of having a character that just reacts to whatever the plot throws at them, a want makes way for our character to shape and influence the narrative. I do want to say that I recommend creating a want for your character that can actually be pursued in the game. So it's best not to have any specific person involved, like wanting revenge on a specific character from their backstory that they will never meet in the game. <laughs> Let's go back and use our character's conflict to inform their want. We have established that this person is a student of arcane magic and that they are being kicked out from their school due to their impulsiveness. Let's say that they now want to become the most powerful wizard to prove that they are worthy of love and respect. These steps now open the door for your character to have a character arc. What this means is a transformation or inner journey of a character over the course of a story. For example, our wizard character might during the story realize that becoming powerful also means being more careful with how you use that power. And in turn he becomes less impulsive or something like that. Or perhaps they discover that they don't need to become the most powerful wizard to be worthy of love and respect. They are already worthy of that. Now it isn't just the companions you meet that can have character moments, but your character can as well. And that's fucking awesome. <laughs> the important thing is that discovering our character's need is something that can happen through the course of the game story and not something we necessarily choose from the get go. Hopefully I've made it clear how you can go from a blank slate to having the foundation of a real character. And feel free to go as much in depth with this process as you want. This is just intended as some guiding steps to get to a character that is interesting to play narratively as well. Also, if you feel like sharing it, don't hesitate to write the three steps for your own character in the comments below. I would love to hear it and maybe others can use it as inspiration. Thank you for watching, I hope you have a great day, and I know it's not a Star Wars video, but I'm saying it anyways. May the Force be with you.